Thanks for staying tuned here at Crosstalk. It is quite disturbing to prevent facts so unflattering about Israel. Many of you know our ministry focuses much attention on the Holy Land. We want to encourage believers to visit the land and to draw near to the people of the land. We want to help our viewers build their faith and understand the scriptures as we often focus attention on relevant places in Israel and consider historic Jewish sites that bring our beliefs to life in the light of the glorious miracle that is the modern nation of Israel. Yet the tragedy of abortion within the land of Israel cannot be ignored. In Israel today, one in four Jewish pregnancies tragically ends in abortion. Millions of Jewish children were murdered by the Nazis. Everyone recognizes how despicable this was. But more Jewish babies are being murdered by Jewish mothers and fathers simply because the babies are inconvenient. This is not acceptable. This cannot be right. We should not be silent. Yes, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but pray for the babies. The land cries out for the blood that was shed. Abortion is shedding of innocent blood when you, we look at the, at the Bible. And so we have so much bloodshed. We have uh, bloodshed with, uh, with the battles with the enemies. We have uh, now so many car accidents in Israel. We have uh, uh, violence in, in families now, things that in the past we didn't have like, like we have today. And when we look in the, in, the, in the Word of God, we see that the, the people of Israel follow the Lord, the Lord protect them. But when we don't follow the Lord, the Lord allow enemies against us, and that's what we face. We face enemies, and we shed, uh, we shed innocent blood, and blood is being shed upon us. Meanwhile, the United Nations has an agenda for globalizing abortion on demand. Peter Smith is Chief Administrative Officer for the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children and the International Right to Life Federation at the United Nations. They're trying to make abortion a universal human right. And most of the countries of the world don't have legalised abortion. They don't think killing their, their children is a really good thing. So there's a lot of resistance to it. But Britain's leading the pack there, especially with the EU, and trying to push this through, along with a lot of other depraved stuff. And um, But the compliance committees for the, all the different conventions have been taken over by people who are totally pro-abortion, have invented this universal right to abortion. And they've been pressurising about 60 nations to legalise abortion. And a couple have, but most of them have held out. But the UN is... Um, doing a lot of dreadful things in this regard. Hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. So God is talking to mockers, scoffers who don't believe, but they're the rulers. He said, you boast, we have entered into a covenant with death, and with the grave we have made an agreement. That's what abortion is. It's a covenant with death. Instead of entering into the life that God and Jesus want for us, we choose death. And it enters into the body, it enters into the soul, and it's a terrible, terrible prison. For we have made a lie our refuge and falsehood our hiding place. That's what is the covering over abortion, falsehood and lies. If the blood of Abel was crying out to God from the ground, how much more would the blood of two million unborn children cry out to us? If we could hear those silent screams, things would change.
we just allow the silence to continue? And of course, it's not just the silence of the, the unborn child. I believe it's also the silence of the women that have had abortions. And we very rarely in society hear those women speaking out about their abortions, very often because they're grieving, very often because they thought perhaps this would be the answer to their situation. There's a lot of pain and a lot of hurts after the abortion. And there are many times that their lives is just not the same as it was before. Many of them do not uh, make the connection between the abortion that they have done and performed to the feelings that they are facing. And when they all of a sudden start to cry and get depressed, they don't understand that there is connection between the abortion and their uh, emotional uh, um, feelings. The abortion is not good for women or men. It's a pain. It's a doorway to pain and suffering that causes incalculable sorrow. We know that also women that have had abortion, it's very difficult for them to bond to their um, husband later on. And uh, there is a lot of effect um, of uh, anger and resentment that comes after the abortion. And so I believe that there are divorces that are happening because of the abortion. When we return, you will hear my confession. Please stay tuned. The land cries out. <laughs>